Thank you, Fred. Uh, June 2nd, primary election day is right around the corner, and we are prepared, and I understand you've arrived at, with all the stakeholders, some consensus here recently, and you want to give us an update on the election that's coming. Absolutely. Thank you, Governor. Thanks for all you're doing for our state. I am pleased to announce that together with the Indiana Republican Party Chairman Kyle Hupfer and the Indiana Democratic Party Chairman John Zodi, my office will be making further recommendations to the Indiana Election Commission regarding the June 2nd primary election. The commission will be meeting virtually tomorrow at, on Friday, April 17th at noon, and you can find the Zoom meeting information on the Indiana Election Division website. These recommendations come after many discussions with county clerks and election staff, the state parties, the Indiana Election Division, and they represent what we believe to be best practices for an unprecedented election cycle. You all know that on March the 25th, the primary election date was moved from May 5th to June the 2nd. And at that time, constraints around absentee vote by mail were lifted. And as of this morning at 7.30, over 70,400 voters have, or have requested an absentee ballot. Any registered voter can request an absentee ballot by mail, and it's very easy. You call your county clerk and request an application be mailed to you, or you can go to indianavoters.com to print an application, fill it out, sign it, and return it to your county. And remember, May 21st is the deadline to request an absentee ballot. Early in-person voting will take place. It's a limited time period. It's normally 28 days in our state. But starting May the 26th, the Tuesday after Memorial Day, and until Saturday, June the 1st, we will have in-person early voting. I would caution you, please check with your county as locations may be different than past locations. In-person election day voting will take place on June 2nd. And again, check with your county because locations could be different from past elections. The Indiana Election Commission will also, that their order will also be accompanied by health and safety information for counties. As recommended by the Center for Disease Control, we plan to address the potential coronavirus threats by minimizing direct contact among Hoosier voters and election staff, educating poll workers on sanitation best practices, and ensuring polling locations are supplied with the necessary personal protective equipment, all while maintaining the highest standard of election security. The Indiana Election Commission order will also give counties flexibility in establishing precinct and vote center locations, as well as central count locations. Indiana is applying for the federal election COVID-19 funds in the amount of $7.9 million. We are using that money to purchase masks, gloves, hand sanitizer, cleaning and disinfecting supplies for voting systems, electronic poll books, and general services. And we will be distributing those uh, supplies to the counties. Federal and state dollars will also be used to communicate important information to voters, like deadline to register is May the 4th, encouraging people to vote by mail, and the deadline to request a ballot, again, is May 21st. Also, those ballots must be received by the county clerk by noon on election day. We will also be using social media to recruit high school students, college students, and the unemployed, recently unemployed to represent their party at the polls in an attempt to recruit younger election workers. Voters and reporters alike should prepare for delayed primary results. Some clerks may be operating with reduced staff or unfamiliar resources, and the volume of absentee ballots may require counting to last longer than normal. Again, I want to thank Chairman John Zodi, Chairman Kyle Hupfer, the Indiana Election Division, Indiana's 92 hardworking county clerks, and the Indiana Election Commission members for their work on this issue, and especially Governor Holcomb for his continued support. You know, we have never experienced anything like this before but I have to tell you, I am very encouraged by what I am hearing from election workers around the state. We're going to keep marching forward, and we are going to make sure 
that Hoosier voices are heard on June the 2nd.